Cool. All righty. All righty, delivery game. G'day, everyone. Um, it's great to be here. Um, hope you're all excited here for day one, uh, Drupal Fest, is what I like to call it. Um, well, let's get started. So, let me introduce you to the under seven lorikeets. Um, can anyone guess uh, what game the lorikeets play, by any chance? Soccer? Basketball? I like it. No, actually, it is soccer. Well done. Oh, yeah. We've got some prizes at the end. Uh, that's right. So actually, they play uh, mini ruse uh, soccer. So so they play a modified version of the, of the game. Obviously, made made for uh, sort of six to sort of nine year olds, um, so they can learn the basics of the game. Um, but can anyone tell me the rules of mini ruse soccer? Obviously, the basics. Oh, yeah, we've got one here. What's that? No hands. You obviously got to use your got to use your feet. And someone else. You can use your head. You just can't use your arms. Right. So the basics of the game. You've got to score goals. But just like most of you. Um, if I actually told you to break down all the rules of the game, um, you might have a little trouble. So, um, but that's my role. So I'm the coach of the under seven lorikeets, and I've been coaching for the last uh, six years. And my role is to teach them, obviously, the rules of the games, um, to you know, work on their passing, their uh, heading, uh, kicking, etc., but also to make sure they have fun. And so, um, but you might be starting to wonder, like, you know, how does this connect to, to the discussion today? But funny enough, it's no different to my role as an engagement lead uh, running some large digital uh, transformation projects into government. Um, I work with Cordelta Digital and we work with l large uh, clients, mainly in the, in the federal government space in Canberra, um, to deliver really complex um, digital transformation projects where often the rules of the game are unknown. So it's my job, um, firstly, to understand the rules, um, to teach the rules of the game to my team and to get them working cohesively. So um, I love being involved in kids sport, uh, particularly because I get to hang out with my son, uh, Declan. He's the one, he's the most enthusiastic one up there in the red boots. Um, but it teaches, a, obviously teaches a lot about myself, but it also teaches a lot about managing and motivating people, uh, which is my area of expertise. So, so today, uh, the Laura Keats are gonna guide us through, as believe it or not, there's a lot they can teach us. Um, a little bit about me, so you already uh, know that I'm head coach of the Under 7 Lorikeets, um, obviously work with Cordelta Digital, um, and my background actually spans communications, marketing, um, advertising space, so I've delivered everything from large scale sort of global campaigns, uh, national campaigns, and I've worked across the private, public, um, and the not-for-profit sector over, over the years, um, all the way through with some sort of, you know, there's always been a connection with digital, um, and I've been recently with uh, Core Delta Digital for just on 20 months, uh, which is pretty cool. So I, I don't profess to be an agile expert or you know, um, project manager, but I've delivered some pretty complex things um, during my career, and so I hope to share some of those insights with you today. Um, so let's get into it. So the delivery game. Um, what is the delivery game? Um, I thought um, we'll tackle this from a delivery management point of view, but if there's anyone here who's obviously not from a, that point of view, um, hopefully there's something you can take away as well. But to win in any game, first you need to understand the game. So let's have a look at it. So for me, the delivery game is all about the players, the people. Um, and just like the lorikeets, uh, every one of them is special. They all have a little quirks. Uh, some are shy. Uh, some uh, just can't sit still. And, um, and some of them are just too good for their own boots. Um, so who's in your team? Um, are they ready to play? Uh, do you have enough players? Do you have the right players? And for the lorikeets, we need about we have about seven to last the season. Um, there's four on the field and there's three on the on the bench at any one time, and uh, it means that we can sort of cover for the whole season. And the season runs for about your standard sort of digital website project, six to sort of nine months. Um, and so, but it, one of the key things that it's important is to understand not only understand who's playing, uh, but that everyone has a role. So let's let's take a look at the roles um, on you know, on any team uh, and the team that you might be looking at. So first there's you, um, once that works, there's you, the delivery lead or uh, on a project. Um, then there's the, uh, your team, so you might be designers, developers, content um, experts, again, depending on who's there. There's your uh, product owner, um, some sort of, probably link into a project board or executive. Um, and there's also the competition that you're gonna be up against uh, throughout the project. Um, so that, for us, normally on a large sort of digital project, that's pretty much the makeup. And so we're going to just break these uh, groups down to see um, 
how they all interrelate. One, one of the things that I like to do, um, sort of often we think of our users um, when we do a deep dive on their challenges, their pain points, and, and the things that they, um, you know, I suppose we're looking at the services that they're trying to consume, but I like to look at it as well from the people in the sort of stakeholder point of view. So, so what are their ob objectives? Um, where do they interact with each other? And what are their frustrations um, and challenges that, that's going to be coming ahead? Because the cohesion of the team um, as a del delivery point of view is, is probably the, the key thing that you want to, um, you know, that, that's, that's primary your primary responsibility. So let's look at um, you as a deliver delivery lead. Um, so we've got you're the team wrangler, you're the organizer, the problem solver, and the coach. Um, and you're also the sh shoulder to cry on. You'll also be the, uh, probably where the finger points if uh, things aren't going to plan. So um, it's really important um, you've got a positive outlook um, and that you're ready to go and bring, to bring the team together. Uh, you've also got uh, your team. So looking at your team, let's have a look and make sure, have you got, have you got the, enough players? Have you got the right players? Um, is everyone available? Um, when we work, obviously, from a, an agency into a client, we're often working on multiple projects. So a lot of uh, the work we do is um, sort of jumping teams, but you know, jumping people or resources between projects and making sure we've got enough resources to deliver uh, what we need for the clients. But likewise, if you're in a large department or a, you know, uh, depending on where you are, um, a large organization, Again, you're going to have multiple projects. So you're going to make sure you've got the right team, but actually they're going to be available. Um, and you also need to sort of understand how you're going to connect with them. Then you've got your product owner. And I've got a little warning here. Um, make sure your product owner is actually a person. Uh, uh, and, and if they're not, you need to turn around and start having a conversation now. And what I, what I mean by that um, from recent projects, particularly in government, where all, sort of uh, decision making is, is quite complex. Uh, it's not necessarily done by individuals, it's done by the, the system. Uh, that's why boards and uh, et cetera are set up. A uh, recent uh, large scale project we were just working on, um, the, we had a project board as the product owner. And what that meant is just stifled decisions. And we got to a point essentially where I think we're up to our 27th um, revision of the visual design. We couldn't get a sign off. Um, so we ended up sitting down with the CIO at that point and just said, this is not working. Um, and we were able to convince them to, to basically shuffle the product owner out, which was essentially the, the senior executive on the board. And um, decisions were able to be made by that person. And the board was more of a, uh, of a uh, more of a, became a more informed of the decisions rather than making the decisions. That's sort of, so yeah, so if, if this is not the case on, on particularly large projects, um, make sure you have those conversations now, because it will uh, come up. And then you've got the executive. So again, um, you know, thinking it, looking at it from their lens, um, they're the key sponsors of the project, um, but they're looking at the whole organisation. So they're looking at your project in isolation. They're looking at multiple things across um, the, the organisation. So you've got to understand their viewpoint as well, um, and also understand how they want to be engaged throughout the process. Um, some executive, um, you know, want to sign off the IA, for example, and that's always fun. Um, and on <laughs> most projects, they also want to sign off. You know, where's the homepage design, for example? And it's like, so there's a, there's a lot of education that needs to happen there. But again, um, understanding that uh, is, is really key. Um, for me, this is a lot, when we work with our clients, there's a lot of trying to understand things that help sort of the product owner that we're working with in, in the organization actually understand this so we can actually help to smooth uh, decisions as we go through the project. Um, all right, well, let's have a look at the, the competition you're going to be up against in the project. I like to look at it. Now, there's going to be players that are going to come on and off here, um, but here are some of the big, the sort of the key um, competitors that you're going to be up against. So let's look at resources, making sure you've got the right resources. I mentioned it before. Uh, then there's a little thing called time, uh, making sure you've got enough time uh, to deliver all the things you need. Um, sometimes you might need to buy some time, um, sub some time on and off. You've got the, the change um, that is going, to, is going to happen across the organisation. Um, you've got a little, a little friends called stakeholders. Um, those are those uh, parents that sometimes are a bit intense on the sideline, um, also want to put their boots on and, you know, come and play. Um, so they're one to watch. Uh, there's budget. There's expectations. Expectations every time. That's one of the biggest uh, challenges of, of any delivery uh, is managing your expectations, not only of your team, um, your boss, but also those, those clients. Every time, you, you know, you promise to do something, if you don't do it, um, expectations is, is going to start scoring some goals. 
uh, and going to stop you from scoring yours. Uh, and the last one is motivation. Here's the last line of defence. Um, one of the key things is keeping the motivation up, not only of yourself, uh, the team, and, and, tr and trying to push through uh, to make sure your clients have the energy to keep going. Um, on most sort of digital projects, they're complex, they're hard, and they're long. Um, so keeping the enthusiasm up uh, is really good. Um, so yeah, so there's lots more that's probably going to come up, come against you, but thinking like this just helps to sort of frame what you're going to be up against um, and also sets you up, uh, your project up for a success. So now we've sort of understand the players, let's understand the game. So just like the, the lorikeets, um, understanding the game is a big part of, you know, the, the start of any season, um, but we like to frame or I like to frame any sort of the start of any project um, by un trying to understand the problem. And it's, a, it's really important that you actually get a clear consensus of the problems that you're trying to solve with the project um, across all those stakeholders from uh, the product owner, the executive, and your team. So we're all working to the same thing. Um, but this, this is a quote uh, we often use. Um, again, the emphasis is on um, if you define the problem first, um, it's going to be much easier solving it um, along the way. Uh, the, way, the way we frame a lot of discovery uh, phases, it doesn't matter if we, we have whatever stage we come into the project, it's really simple. Um, this could be a matter of a two week process or a one week process, but it could also be as long as a three month engagement um, if you're just doing a discovery piece. Really important, this can be done in a workshop, for example. Um, you know, you obviously need to do an order of the current state, you need to define the vision uh, for the future, and you also need to then prioritize and, and build a roadmap for where you're gonna be or how you're going to get there, and that should inform whatever strategy. Um, so we, we use this, um, we're doing an intranet project at the moment uh, for a private client in, in Canberra. We had a workshop that framed here. We did this in about two hours. We, we didn't really get to the uh, defining the vision, so we'll do that. So this, this can be done over two, work, two, two workshops um, if you need, but it can also be a, a lengthy research piece as well. Um, and remember, it's obviously throughout this process that it's a, it's a people game. Um, so we always try and find ways to bring people together. Um, that's why we do oranges at half time with the kids, otherwise they're, you know, they're off running around. Um, and just like our team, um, we do things like come to Drupal South and go to Mona yesterday and have too much rosé as well, which was always fun. Um, but we always try and do uh, some social events. Uh, we actually do CrossFit during the week. We're just trying to find ways um, to, to, to connect on the people side, on the people level, and you can do this with your clients as well. Um, I think that's really important to make sure that you know uh, you're sort of ready for the journey ahead. So, um, all right, let's look at number three. So, so goal setting on an organized, uh, on any project is really key, um, but it's not always about winning. Um, and so, for the lorikeets, uh, a good example. So. In the under sevens, or under six, I think it's even till next year, so we don't actually count goals, even though they run around with their, they tell me how many goals they scored every, every game. Um, so for me, I try and reset their goals onto passing and, and other things that we can focus on so that it gets them working together as a team. Because if you've ever seen little um, mini leagues uh, or mini roost soccer, everyone, you know, there's just a swarm of bees following, the, following the, the ball around the field. So I try and get them to spread out and pass, and we really try and celebrate that. Um, particularly for the parents as well. So I've got a little video here which I thought I'd share which was a bit of a proud moment for me uh, when the, the team basically, so there's the four players on the field and they basically passed, um, were able to pass it, uh, each of them um, were able to pass it which is cool. There's no, there's no audio so, but there's little Dylan, he passes it to Ante, he passes it out the wing, uh, I think that's little Jake, and then I Hey, Liam. Sure. That's Liam, Liam who oh. misses the goal, but it was pretty cool anyway. So yeah, so you get the gist. So it's like not celebrating the goal, but cel celebrating the other moments. And sometimes it's it's a matter of doing that. So when we look at um, from an organisational point of view, or how your project fits in, um, and I suppose I'm, I'm referencing here larger, sort of bigger digital uh, transformation projects. The at a broader level, you know, you've got the organisational goals, you've got the project goals that sit in here. Um, so if you take a government website as well, it's usually quite a large uh, project within the scale of the sort of department. It could be a 12 month project, um, but it's also going to fit um, because majority of the services are delivered through the website in some way. 
um, it became, becomes a high priority project across there. So if we, lat if we ladder them up, what we're really trying to do is make the connection between the organizational goals, the project goals, uh, you get your mi milestone, milestone goals, and then that's broken down into the sprints. But at every layer here, you've got your organizational goals is pretty much where your executive is sitting. Um, your project goals is very much where your product owner is going to be sitting. Um, and then milestone goals with your product owner and the, and the delivery lead plus your team, and your team is really going to sit at that sprint goals. But connecting that story is really your job. And so it's really important that you have each of those perspectives in mind because when you're talking to an executive, you need to be able to have that conversation at this level. Um, your product owner is going to be concerned about the project, but it's also going to help you make, manage um, decisions throughout the project. Um, so it's, again, a good, good perspective to keep in mind. Um, a favourite quote of mine um, is, is exactly this. Every human interaction is a chance to engage and motivate. And that's, I see, the, see that throughout a project. Um, it's the little things you do, um, particularly at the team level, um, getting out of your seat rather than sending an email sometimes, picking up the phone and actually calling a client rather than sending another email is actually, um, I always make a big effort to do that. Um, and it's particularly if you look at, say, a, so like a project and we look at a sprint cycle um, at, in our agency with most of the clients we're working with, we work a, we obviously work in an agile um, way using Scrum, we use it, work in two week sprints, um, which can be sometimes challenging working into government. Um, but all I see is the touch points that we've got to interact with the clients. So you've got your, obviously your planning meeting, you've got your daily stand-ups, um, you've got your backlog grooming meeting um, with the product owner, or the, um, sometimes that becomes a different type of meeting, but you've got your review and retro. And I think what Agile gives you is a, is a framework to ask lots of touch points to make sure that everyone's on track um, and to make sure you've got the right resources to deliver the sprint goals that you've, you've set out. So, um, so. You've got, uh, so we've got an understanding of the players, we've got a kind of perspective of where your project fits in, your project goals, but the favourite question I get asked uh, at the start of any season is, what field are we playing on? Um, there's always one parent at the start of the season gets lost, and so the start of the season for any, even for the lorikeets, but also for a project is always the messiest. So you've got to make sure, um, you know, everyone has the right tools and is ready to go. Um, they have a context of the project, they don't want time to turn up, and they're ready to go for the first meeting. So hopefully, um, if you get everything right, uh, you'll have all of your team uh, turning up to the first meeting, ready to go, shin pads on, socks up, shirt tucked in, uh, ready to kick the first ball. Uh, that's little decks there. So let's go through some of the things that you might um, think about for just getting ready for that kickoff. And the, I think the first is really, is really the the key of getting your project started off on the right foot. A lot of this stuff we actually do uh, because, again, we're working into a client. We do this in the background, but this sort of prepares us so that we're all on the same page when we, when we hit that first client meeting. Um, obviously, make sure you set up the tools. It's, you know, it's not rocket science, but making sure everyone has access. Is, um, you'd be amazed about how many projects start and things aren't set up, folders aren't, aren't where they need to be. People don't have the right access to the tools they're going to be using through the project. Confirm the scope. Make sure the team, the budget, and the scope, and the timings are all really clear. Um, oftentimes, the contract will tell you one thing, and then as soon as you go and meet with the client um, to get things started, things are starting to shuffle. Oh, the minister wants the website launched uh, next month. So it's like, cool, let's do that. So again, you've got to be ready for that, because you've got to be uh, ready to have that conversation. But you know, the first reaction from the team is going to be, how are we going to do that? It's like, we don't have the resources. We don't have the time. It's like. Um, Quoting uh, Tony Robbins there, uh, and then the last one is organise a kickoff meeting with the team and the product owner. One of the things we do, um, again, because we're working in, we actually do an internal kickoff, and you'd be surprised the amount of agencies or, or teams that don't do this. And that's really just to get everyone on the same page, go through the scope, make sure everyone's really clear on their roles um, and what's expected of them through the project. That's where people can obviously give them a chance to raise any concerns. They might say, oh, "I'm actually already." overloaded. Um, some of my team are here today. We're always working on multiple projects. Um, and so particularly our development team are often stretched across many projects, uh, as I'm sure. So it's, again, good chance for, for you to understand uh, what you're coming up against. But some of the things you want to cover off in that kickoff meeting is obviously you want to bring the players together. You want to understand the context. Um, you want to confirm the project. And this, some of these things you would want to go over with a product owner or the client. Um, but it's no different if you're working internally um, to, a, to a sort of a, an area. And um, making sure that you actually define what success looks like. 
uh, and agree on the scope and timings. And th this, um, this sort of kickoff meeting can also happen, these questions can also be asked at all layers, um, with all layers of the business. Even the executive, under having an understanding of what this is, um, may actually give you the, the insights uh, to get things started. So, so once you have all that, um, obviously you're, you're ready to play. So, um, so you're ready to play, but you know, what's, the, what's the game plan? Um, every Friday night um, before Saturday morning's game, uh, and after I've at least had one beer, uh, I'll sit down and try and map out what we're going to do for the next, uh, for the morning's game. So I spent about 10, 15 minutes to just map out some of the, the drills we're going to do with kids. Uh, because if I rock up, you know, 8.30 in the morning with no, uh, no plans, I end up having balls everywhere uh, and kids jumping all over me, which is, which is fun, but um, obviously doesn't get things started. So uh, at Core Delta, we obviously, we use a, we, we use an agile approach that uses design thinking and human-centered design principles to sort of to map into the various stages. Um, this to Discovery Alpha Beta Live, which I'm sure most of you will be familiar with. Um, this can, you know, this I suppose this this approach can span anything from a three-month project all the way through uh, to 12 to 12 months to longer. Um, the discovery piece, which I mentioned before, can be done as short as two weeks, um, but it also can be uh, quite a lengthy one depending on the size of the project. Um, and this also aligns uh, for us, because again, we, we work a lot of times with federal government clients, we align it to um, the DTA standard. Um, if you haven't, I'm sure many of you are familiar with it, but it's a good resource, it's got lots of um, great info on there. Um, and a lot of times our clients are actually leaning on us to tell them how to meet the standard um, that they're working to. So again, it's good to have some tools, it also helps to guide conversations with executive. Um, who also don't know um, how to do this. And so um, these sort of things, again, help with that decision-making process along the way. Um, the other thing every project needs, and just because you're using Agile, it doesn't mean you, you don't need a roadmap. Um, really key that you have a, a roadmap. Again, you've got all these stakeholders uh, to manage. Uh, here's an example of one we did recently for the acma.gov.au, which is recently launched. Um, again. This is a very high-level roadmap, but I suppose the emphasis is making sure you've got a plan. Um, my dad always used to say, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, um, and that's, that's pretty much here. You wouldn't, you, know, you wouldn't climb a mountain without a map, so make sure um, that you've got one. And this just allows you to keep one step ahead of the team, and that's, and that's really the point there. So, so you've got the players, you understand the goals, um, you've got your methodology, and you're ready to go, but you also need to... Um, be ready for any wet weather, because um, on most large-scale projects, things can get a little frosty, um, just like the 8.30 starts um, on Saturday mornings with lorikeets. In Canberra, it gets to about, can be down to like minus five, uh, so the kids, uh, by the time they're out there, it could be zero. So again, it's, it's making sure that um, they've got the, their beanies um, and they're ready to go. Um, sometimes, you know, the parents are texting and saying, is the game still on? It's like, the game is always on, <laughs> unless I tell you so. Um, rock up, but the kids love it. Um, it doesn't really matter the weather, um, as long as they're motivated and they, they know the goal. Um, then they'll they'll rock up with a smile on their face, ready to go. So, um, so I wanted to share just to sort of um, as we're going through, I just wanted to share s some good um, examples on the recent project that we we just launched, the acma.gov.au. It's on the latest um, GovCMS platform, um, and where a few things went wrong. This was a large sort of 12 to 14 month project. Um, we managed the alpha, beta, and live um, part of the project. And I was responsible for, obviously, all the design team. So we had, went through a full UX. Uh, we had our development team. And we also did um, the content transformation as well. So we had, essentially, uh, two contracts running. Uh, so we had the design and, and dev. And then we also had the, um, the, the content, which sort of overlapped and helped us get us to live. But one of the things uh, that went wrong, and I mentioned around the, the product owner, this was the this was the project um, where we actually went through 27 different variations of the visual design, um, a process that was supposed to take four weeks ended up taking 13 weeks, and actually delayed uh, delivery of the launch uh, in the end by a couple of months. And it was only when, um, and we did, we did multiple workshops, we did, um, there wasn't too many things we didn't try, we did mood boards, we, we met with different stakeholders, uh, we got uh, you know, clarity on the brief, uh, we went back at various stages, we presented, but every time we went to the board, um, things just went pear-shaped and we couldn't get consensus. And one of the things we learned, well, A, we didn't have a clear uh, product owner. So 
Um, we, at the time, uh, there was no CIO, um, which, was, which was probably part of the challenge. So there wasn't a clear decision-making uh, path in the organisation to get this done. Um, the chair was never available. The, the, the authority uh, runs their sort of head of the organisation was the chair. Um, and she wasn't engaged through the process. So by the time she would see it in the board, boardroom, um, you know, she wanted a change. And then we, so we'd only be seeing this every two to... We, the board meetings at the time were at two, two months, or every two weeks. Um, so in, in the end, we sat down with the CIO, the new CIO, we, we mapped a new process, um, and we were able to get him to be the, uh, the new product owner, and then inform the board. And so we were able to find a different way to get around the decisions. But um, it really called on all our relationships that we built across the organisation um, to, to be able to have that sort of confident conversation um, with the organisation. And in the end, obviously, we got the website launched. Um, it just launched end of, end of October. Um, which is pretty cool, and um, and it's all going going fairly well at the moment. So, so so a couple of lessons learned on, on that one, and and I suppose to wrap things up. Um, so for me, like rela relationships are key. Um, the game is all about the players, uh, you know. So if, and a, as a delivery lead or delivery manager, um, it's understanding of the dynamics of the people that are happening across any any project is really key. Um, you know, being realistic. Um, you know, I think. It's about, all about managing expectations and making sure um, that each moment that you're talking to someone and you're trying to commit to something that, that you can actually do what you say. Um, stay in constant contact, um, flag concerns early, um, and, and be honest. But probably the, the heart of it is really communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, that's really the key. Um, yeah. And so after all that, um, you, you should, you know, hopefully there's some, some insights in there that can help you set your project up for success. Um, but importantly as well, you've got to make sure you celebrate the, the win. So at the end of every season, we always do a sausage sizzle or something to get the team together. Um, so I encourage you to have a think about how you're going to celebrate or mark the occasion with your team. It could be as simple as a, you know, uh, a morning tea or a coffee. Um, but you know, make sure you, you bring the team together. So I thought I'd close. There's no, there's no audio on this next video, but it was a good example. Um, one of the kids was... Yeah, they scored a goal and they put it in for the Mini Roos uh, Soccer Player of the Month. So I thought I'd share that cute little video, so I'll, I'll play that. And then we can go to some questions. Hey everyone, it's Tommy Orr here from the Central Coast Mariners. Um, I've just been given the nominations for the Aldi Mini Roo Player of the Month for June. And it's with great pleasure that I announced that Liam from Belmore Football Club is the winner for June. So from everybody here at the Central Coast Mariners, a big congratulations to you and uh, look forward to hopefully seeing you in a Mariners kit in the future. Cheers. questions or um, yeah we can we can go for that cool thanks so much